Hello, welcome to the second installment of the Center of Math series in Indian Mathematics. In this episode, we'll be talking about the Indian mathematician Brahmagupta. Born in 598 uh, CE, Brahmagupta contributed to both the fields of astronomy and mathematics. He used mathematics to prove that the Earth was round and calculated the length of the solar year um, to within six hours. Mathematically, he did revolutionary work that allowed the field to advance forward. Uh, his most notable contribution was perhaps his work uh, with, z uh, with the concept of zero. Around the time that Brahmagupta was born, the Indian numeral um, system was a base 10 system. Uh, this meant that um, instead of having a unique symbol for each number, there were only symbols for the 10 digits uh, 0 through 9. Uh, however, uh, unlike other digits that uh, were represented by numbers um, like 1 through 9, 0 wasn't treated like a number. Instead, it was only a placeholder, um, so that meant its only use was to distinguish numbers. Um, for the creation of a placeholder, there was no way to distinguish, for example, uh, 33 from 303 or 330. This, nece this necessitated the creation of a placeholder, which was zero. Uh, but that's all it was at first, just a placeholder. Um, Brahmagupta changed how people thought about zero in his work, Brahmas Fuda Siddhanta. Uh, this was the first record of treating zero as an integer um, that has been recorded. Um, although he incorrectly assumed that an integer divided by zero will equal zero, he made several correct assumptions about zero. He correctly surmised that the, that the addition or subtraction of zero to any number would leave the number unchanged, that the multipli multiplication of zero by any number would equal zero. Um, with this knowledge and interpretation of zero as an integer, he was able to work with negative numbers. Before the concept of zero as a number, there was no mathematical work on negative numbers. However, by treating zero as an integer, Brahmagupta was uh, able to correctly assume that there are negative numbers. Um, in, this, in his work, referring to positive numbers as fortunes and negative numbers as deaths, he wrote in the work several properties about negative numbers that are true, such as the fact that the product of two negative numbers is positive, and the product of a positive number and negative number is negative. In algebra's infancy, he was also able to uh, contribute to, this, or to the field of mathematics. Um, the equation x squared minus 9 equal to 0 um, was believed to only have one solution, 3. Um, however, uh, this was before negative numbers existed. Um, and after discovering negative numbers, uh, Brahmagupta was able to correctly assert that negative 3 was another solution to the equation. Additionally, he looked at quad or quadratic equations with two unknowns of the form ax squared plus c equal to by squared. Um, this equation uh, was even looked at in the Western world for another thousand years uh, when Fermat uh, explored it. Uh, finally, Brahmagupta was able to develop a formula to find the area of a cyclic quadrat quadrilateral, which is known today as Brahmagupta's formula. Uh, this formula uh, sets the area of a cyclic quadrilateral um, equal to the square root of the differences um, of the semi-perimeter and each of the side lengths, or the product of differences of the semi-perimeter and each of the side lengths. Our uh, semi-perimeter is equal to half the perimeter of the quadrilateral. Or here's one way to derive this result. Uh, so we're going to show uh, that the area of a cyclical quadrilateral is equal to the square root of the semi-perimeter uh, minus uh, p semi-perimeter or times semi-perimeter minus q times the semi-perimeter minus r times the semi-perimeter minus s, where the semi-perimeter is half of the perimeter. Uh, so we've got um, a quadrilateral a, b, c, d with sides um, p, q, r, and s. Um, so we're going to uh, derive the formula using this quadrilateral. Uh, so the first thing we do is we look at uh, the area of two triangles we've drawn um, by drawing um, a chord from D to B. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward, uh, just the area of triangle uh, BCD and the area of triangle ABD. Um, and we know that by definition this quadrilateral is cyclical. Uh, so we can say that angle A is complementary to angle C. I'm using this property um, we can say that um, the sine of A is therefore equal to sine C. Uh, 
Uh, so what we did here is we plugged in um, sine of A uh, for sine of C. Uh, so now we have sine of A in this equation. And then what we did is we squared both sides and we found that um, area squared is equal to a quarter of P squared Q squared sine squared of A um, plus one half P Q R S sine squared of A uh, plus one half R squared S squared sine of A. Uh, so now what we do is we can uh, factor some terms out of this equation. So what we did here is uh, we found that um, using the PQ and RS terms, um, we can factor out factor it out to equal uh, PQ plus RS uh, squared, or a quarter of that, multiplied by sine squared of A. And then we multiply both sides by four and use a trig, trig, or trig identity that a sine squared of A plus cosine squared of A is equal to one. And we found that um, uh, this equals one minus cosine squared of A. Uh, so now what we do is we wanna uh, play with cosine squared of A uh, using um, the fact that these two angles uh, share, or these two triangles share the common line DB. Uh, so, as you can see here, uh, we use the law of cosines um, to find that, or to find the length of this line. Um, so we set them equal to each other because um, it's the com or it's a common line. So we see that p squared plus q squared uh, minus two pq cosine of a is equal to r squared plus s squared minus two r s cosine of c. Um, again, because it's a cyclic quadrilateral, uh, we have the identity that angle A plus angle C is equal to 180. Um, but in this case, that means that um, cosine of A is the opposite of cosine of C. Um, so we bring, so we plug that into here, uh, bring the uh, two PQ cosine of A to this side. Um, apologies. Um, bring this to this side. Um, and then we bring the r squared plus s squared to the left side. We see that p squared plus q squared minus r squared minus s squared is equal to two times uh, pq plus rs times cosine of a. Um, and now we can see that um, this is equal to, um, or this squared is equal to um, four times this, so we can make of this substitution. All right, uh, so as you can see, uh, all we did was um, we factored this out, um, got these two, these two expressions, and we plugged uh, this expression um, into here, and then multiplied uh, both sides by four. So now we're gonna play around with this a little bit uh, to make it easier to work with. Uh, so what we did was we had uh, this expression um, you can see that it's of the form a squared minus b squared, uh, so that can be factored as a plus b, a minus b. Uh, so we just did that here. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to play around a little more and uh, make it just a little bit easier to work with. So what we did here uh, is we um, factored these into uh, more manageable expressions, um, which can be done if you multiply all these out. Um, you find that you have uh, 2pq and 2rs to pair with r squared and s squared and uh, negative p squared and negative q squared. Um, and then the same over here, um, and those factor like this. 
Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to factor them one more time um, and see what the result is. That's what we did here. Um, so you multiply, if you multiplied all this out, um, it would result in an expression um, that can be that could be factored into this. So we have uh, q plus r plus s minus p times p plus r plus s minus q times p plus q plus s minus r times p plus q plus r minus s. So now we can substitute in the semi perimeter, um, which is just half the perimeter. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, so as you can see, um, we're left with 60 times area squared equal to 16, uh, which we can take out because uh, this is all over two. Um, and there are four instances where it's removed. So um, you multiply it by 16 to counteract this. So 16 uh, times semi perimeter minus p uh, times semi perimeter minus q times semi perimeter minus r times semi perimeter minus s. And so now, with this expression, all there is left to do is to divide both sides by 16 and take the square root of both sides. Uh, so as you can see, um, after all this calculation, we find that the area is equal to a semi-perimeter minus p times semi-perimeter minus q times semi-perimeter minus r times the semi-perimeter minus s. And the square root of all that um, is equal to the area. And that matches uh, what Brahma Gupta said. Um, and that proves the formula. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, even though Brahma Gupta's contributions to math and astronomy are countless, we hope you learned something um, about uh, his mathematical contributions. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the other videos of the series. Thank you.